Amen. Glory be to the Almighty God. Thank you, the Lord God, for giving for another day of praise and worship service here at the gift from God Worship Center. Amen. Let's give the says the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord God. For today, for he is worthy to be praised. Yes, I want to thank him and continue to lift him up and, and thank him for all things that he is doing, all things he has done. And of course, all the things that he would do in the future. Mm -hmm. We also thank the Lord again for um, all of the saints, thank all those God. that are, all those that will be on today. Thank you. We want to thank the Lord for all the ministers, saints, prophets, evangelists, disciples of Christ, deacons, deaconess, mm -hmm. washmen, worshipers, mourners. All of those that's in the service of Jesus the Christ. Thank you, Lord. We thank the Lord today for all of them. And um, we also thank the Lord for those in these end times that walk before the Lord to be thy perfect in the name of Jesus the Christ. Thank you, Lord God. We also thank the Lord for all of those that move in boldness without fear on today. People of God, prophets of God that knows that we are in the time of trouble and that they might have to stand against the principalities. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we might say, uh, what was that thing they said? They, uh, they had to get a word to the... the uh, the, the powerful or they given the word of Christ to the to the mighty. And I can't remember that saying right off. But it was singing. I'm trying to think real quick. Uh, what was that thing? The law is on the tip of my tongue but it won't come off. Oh <laughs> uh, man, what was that thing? It was talking about how you have to, um, you have to speak to the mighty, you know, the, the, uh, the kings and, you know, the people of authority. And what in the world is that thing can't come off my tongue? I like it, try to come, couldn't get it. But anyway, uh, we thank the Lord just the same. Maybe it'll come to me in a few minutes with the whole thing clarified. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. Truth to power or something like that. It will call you how to speak truth to power. That means that you have to give the true word of God to the powers that be. Something of that nature. Alright, so we're going to keep y'all along today. Uh, we just want to have a little message here today. Uh, for all of the people of God and if there's anyone that have someone that hot mass soul and spirit before we get started we can do those real quick before we get started um, Now, this might be something, I don't know how the Lord be working, but this scripture I have might be a little bit about what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. This is Mark chapter 10, and this is actually passing the, the New Testament scripture that I pulled for today. Mm -hmm. um, this is Mark chapter 10, and it started at verse 42. Um, but, and it reads, But Jesus called them to him, and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, mm -hmm. and their great ones exercise authority upon them. Verse 43, But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. Verse 44, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest 
shall be servant of all. Mm -hmm. Verse 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, mm -hmm. and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. So what he's saying is that if you are any of the names that I just called entitled what he's saying, then you have just made yourself what to the people? A servant. A servant. Mm -hmm. You just made yourself a servant or if you want to say a slave. Mm -hmm. You just made yourself a slave. Even though a lot of ministers might get up and take off out of the church, you know, after church service because they don't want to interact mm -hmm. with the people. Remember, you have made yourself a servant to the people. Mm -hmm. So you just can't get up when your church service is over and head out the back door. You have made yourself a servant of Christ. And being a servant of Christ, you make yourself a what? A chief. And if you make yourself a chief, then you make yourself a servant. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And I know a lot of people didn't like for me to be said that when I was coming up in the ministry because sometimes the people come out and they go to feed like the pastor table first. I'm like, well, you're not supposed to feed the pastor table first. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pass the son at the table and go feed the pastors first. Mm. I'm like, you're not supposed to feed the pastors first. Right. <laughs> Actually, the pastor's not even supposed to be sitting there eating. Mm. They're supposed to be doing what? Serving. They're supposed to be servants. Mm. They're supposed to be serving the people. They're not supposed to be sitting eating like they're some chief presidents or something in the world. Mm. They're not supposed to be doing it. You're a servant of Christ. Right. You serve the people. Mm -hmm. You feed my sheep. That's your job. That's why the Lord said to Peter, how many times? Make sure he got it. Mm -hmm. And he got frustrated after he heard it the third time. Because he's like, well, you, we, we think I don't understand? Ah, don't. Just make it show. Just make it show that you understand that you're a slave. And he still didn't get it. Mm. After three times. Even though he came back at that heat of the moment saying, well, you think I don't understand. Still didn't get it. Right. <laughs> okay, anyway. What else we have on today? You have something? Um, okay. Could I just give a quick prayer? Okay. Before we get started. All okay. right. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord God. Bless the Lord God. Bless the Lord God. Father God, we want to thank you and bless you, Lord God, for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. We are thankful, Lord God, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord God. You are the creator of the heavens and of the earth, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us this beautiful day, Lord God, filled with your grace and your mercy, Lord God. And we are thankful, Lord God, that you have brought us here into this place of worship, Lord God. And we seek you daily, Lord God. And we await to hear what thus says the Lord God. So we ask that you will bless this service, bless us in this service, Lord God. And continue to be our provider, be our protector, be our joy, our peace. We bless you in Jesus' name. And we say, Amen. Amen. Glory to the Almighty God. Praise him. All right, so uh, I want to thank the Lord again before we get started on today. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. And of course, you know, I'm glad, I'm excited about everything about Christ. But um, I was watching some more of what's taking place in Russia. Mm -hmm. You have your secrets. <laughs> And the people of Russia is saying 
that the companies that saying on U.S. TV or news stations that they are pulling out of Russia, that they are sanctioning Russia. So I was watching this one guy on there and he was saying that uh, the people are pretty much like hypocrites. They are not leaving Russia. <clears throat> so what he do, he go around to all the stores and show you the stores that still open. You know, all the like, and then he showed the Burger King was still open. Mm. Kentucky Fried Chicken was still open. Mm. I think a pizza place. I know he showed Levi's was closed. Mm. Um, McDonald's was closed. And then he started talking about the Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. um, was closed or they didn't do the Coca-Cola, McDonald's, stuff like that. And he was like, well, um, if you're going to leave Russia, leave Russia. As if they don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't care about your, um, what they call us anyway? We call them the West. What they call us? I guess we the East. <laughs> huh? I guess we the... I think they call us the West. That's what I was just thinking. Maybe they call us the West. But we are West to them. Mm -hmm. I think they call us the Western nations, like they took the Western nations. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, he's saying we don't need your McDonald's. Right. We don't need your Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. And he went on to say the stuff to them was, was, was pretty much garbage. Mm -hmm. It was garbage to them, and Coca Cola with their. Uh, Poison, that's what they were saying. They said poison. So they like, well, we don't need your McDonald's, Coca-Cola. Russia's still gonna, Russia's still gonna survive. We don't need your Western restaurants. And, you know, because you gotta look at when you go into different countries, right? Mm -hmm. Different countries got different cultures. Right. <laughs> they don't even know that about no McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Verizon and you know all that stuff like some of the technical countries like China, the US, you know, some countries might be into the technical stuff. All countries are into that. Mm -hmm. So for you to go over and try to infiltrate their country with some of your Western stuff that you think is profitable, they might see it as like what he was saying, like poison or garbage or something like that. So he was like, well, even if McDonald's leave, there'll be somebody else that'll take that store mm -hmm. or that building and put some better food in there. So they was like, well, we glad that you're gone. Right. They probably was envious of it when they came because it took away their business that was already there. Right. So, so they don't care about somebody not wanting to be in Russia. Like they, like they don't care. It's like you're trying to make everybody um, surround yourself, you know, with the stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. Like everybody, like if you don't have a, a movie theater, your life is like, you don't have a life like you got to go to a movie theater or something. Mm -hmm. People, everybody don't live like that. Right. You got all these different cultures that they're not trying to do like the Western world, what they say. So they were pretty much saying they really didn't care whether they left, stayed, sanctioned, or whatever they did. They were really just wish that you weren't even there, really. Mm -hmm. So they talk like they don't even care. It will be no difference. We got McDonald's around here. We got McDonald's closed. Right. Nobody cared about no McDonald's being closed. I'd rather make my own hamburger. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Nobody cared about no McDonald's closed. I don't care if Kentucky Fried Chicken Club. All of them clothes not too long, but anyway, who care? <laughs> right. I don't care about no franchise clothes. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing here, the gift of God, uh, worship center, preparing ourselves for what? For end times. Mm -hmm. You prepare yourself not to be able to depend on the stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody care about no harass and not working. Right. A lot of people don't care because they ain't going to be able to use these cell phones. Right. I'm already prepared. I don't care to stay with me everywhere I go now. Can't no cell phone me tracking me everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. 
The foreign countries got their own brand of cell phone anyway. Right. Got their own brand. Yeah, they don't have the same stuff we got. Right. So I don't care about no cell phone. I'm almost trying to get um, to a place where I don't even have to use gas. Mm. That might be the, well, I can say it might be the hardest thing just for the sake of conversation. Mm. But to not have a gas is not hard for me at all. Mm. It, it's nothing to me. The only thing gas does is just say, hey, I can get you over here faster than walking. Mm. That's all it's saying. Right. But if I got my mind set up by ground that I'm content with what I have, I don't need to go over there. Mm -hmm. So if I can't go over there, then I can't go over there. So I gotta look at all the people that don't have cars that can't get over them. Right. And they satisfied, they still live. You ain't gonna die. Mm -hmm. You gonna die because you don't have no car. How about right. that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't die because you ain't got no gas. Right. How about that one then? Mm -hmm. Not having a cell phone not gonna take your life away. Right. Remember the Lord said, is the raiment more than the what? The body? The Lord is trying to get you to examine. He's trying to get you to examine the things that you think is so um, viable. Mm -hmm. Take the things that you think is valuable and compare them to something. Mm -hmm. Find something to compare them to. Right. It's like if somebody come and say, well, I need to get a pair of shoes. And then they say, well, okay. I say, okay, I'll tell you what. I buy you a pair of shoes or a tire for your car. Mm. You get to choose one today. I'll get you a tire or a pair of shoes. Mm. Then you got something to compare something to. Mm. Then you might think twice about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we still in the end times. Any questions, any comments, anything so far? Mm -mm. So we still in the end times. We're going to stay long today. Um, so. We still have to make ourselves ready and prepared. Um, like we said, we did go over the things that you need to try to have. Um, I need to probably bring my little bag just to show the stuff I got in mind already. And it's something like what we're saying, you might have to flee your area quickly or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying be prepared for it, right? Because you might have in a situation like they said with Ukraine, one day everything was okay, the next day everybody fleeing. Mm -hmm. And they grabbing, the, the first thing they get their hands on and they're gone. Mm -hmm. And they're not leaving, they leave it with calm, but they end up what? Walking. Huh. They left with cars, they ended up walking. None of them had money. So they were saying that when they did get to places where they would get on the train, they didn't have no way to pay. Mm -hmm. And people won't let them get on the train. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff going on in Ukraine they're not talking about on the news media. Mm -hmm. And they talk about all the different people from other different countries, students that was in Ukraine, that they were not allowed to get on the train and the buses to escape. Mm -hmm. They tell them that is. They tell you about all the African American folks they're trying to keep from getting on. They tell you that is why you voting, mm. why you in the U.S. talking. Mm. They they tell you that part because mm. they want to get you to try to uh, go against Russia. They tell you all stuff happened. They tell you the racism of Ukraine. Mm. They're not saying that to you. All the stuff that's happened. So. Uh, Again, uh, the Lord is also saying, when the disciples said to Christ, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, Matthew 24 and 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, what? When he got on the reach of Ellen and the rest of the people, when they to themselves now, mm -hmm. and they hearing all the stuff he's saying. Mm -hmm. 
they say unto him, tell us, when shall these things be that you're talking to these folks about? We already know they don't have a clue what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Because he's saying, I have not spoken to these people unless I've spoken to them in what? Terrible. In parables. They started understanding what he was saying. So when they got him to themselves privately at the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. they said, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the signs of thy coming? Mm -hmm. What is the sign? And of thy coming at of the end of what we will call in studying Bible is the end of the grace. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the end of the world. Mm -hmm. We study and know that it's the end of the grace. Some people might say it's the end of, I thought I had it up here on the chart here, but it's the end of the age. Yeah, it is. It's in. Well, we got it right here, the oh, age to come. come. We got the age to come. Mm -hmm. But it's the end of the world in the Bible, mm -hmm. but we know it's the end of the grace in study. Mm -hmm. What's your question? <clears throat> it's the end of the grace. Mm -hmm. Now what is he saying? Because we got to go with the word. The Bible says he says the end of the world. What do that mean? We study says the end of the grace is the end of the world, the end of the age, but it said the end of the world. What do that mean? It said the end of the world. What do that mean? It means that just time. Like we might say the end of the world or the end of the world system. Well, it's going to be the end of, yeah, pretty much the system. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty much that system going to end. It's not going to end the world. It's going to end the system. The end of the world means the end of man's rulership. Or they say life as you know it. Life as you know it. Yeah. The end of man's worldly rulership is over. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the king of kings mm -hmm. has to come and sit on what? He got to come sit on this throne. He going to sit on this throne at well. Where he going to sit on the throne at? Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Not the Jerusalem that we know Jerusalem in scripture. Mm -hmm. Not Jerusalem in Israel. It's a new Jerusalem. And when you get into studying this thing, it could be close to the Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Where the Lord always dwell at on that mountain. Because mm -hmm. he says it's going to be a new Jerusalem that's going to come down from what? Yeah. From heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said. It probably could be around somewhere in this area. All things pass away. And all, all things, things come down. All things, all, all things pass away, all things become what? Yeah. The end of the what? The world. As you know it. All flesh shall be what? Trans Changed. Transformed. <laughs> Changed, yeah. Changed, transformed. Mm -hmm. How you know things. At the end of the grace. Mm -hmm. So he said, tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs? And some of the signs fell on me yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was doing good yesterday till I got attacked. <laughs> I was 
doing very well yesterday. When I helped a lot of people doing a lot of good stuff yesterday, and for the end of my day could end, I got attacked. And it took me back as I came in the church door. It took me back to the time of Elisha. When <clears throat> the woman that was keeping him and, you know, giving him a place to stay whenever he passed through the land or whatever, she gave him a place to stay and then she made promises to him and he was going to have a child and all this kind of stuff. And she prophesied, he prophesied that stuff for her life that was going to happen for her and everything happened. But then the child was born one day and the child got sick and fell what? Dead. The child fell dead. So she told her husband to, to, uh, to saddle her the donkey. She said, saddle me the donkey. <laughs> uh, the, the ass or something used the ass in scripture. Mm -hmm. But she said, saddle me the donkey. And uh, she went to Elisha in a hearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, he was, when she was coming, she was coming so fast that uh, I don't have, I know a donkey don't run fast, but still the fast, and she's running the donkey fast, and the donkey gonna go, and the donkey going fast. Why are you moving that donkey that fast, first of all? That donkey don't move, that donkey just move to be trying like, uh, you know, like that. Uh -huh. You got the donkey doing nothing. <laughs> you moving the donkey too fast. Mm -hmm. So Elijah's servant went for the light, tried to, they haunt her. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said, hold on, hold on, don't stop her. Because whatever this is, the Lord did not show it to me. Mm. He said, he don't know what this is. He said, but the Lord did not show this to me. Mm. So he didn't know why she was coming. Mm -hmm. So what happened to me yesterday, I did not see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that thing coming. Uh -huh. And usually I'm warned of stuff that's about to take place. Mm -hmm. So this thing happened yesterday, I did not see this thing coming. And this thing just took me to the Lord wanted to see how you was going to deal with this thing. Right. You know, something he don't let you know anything mm -hmm. that's about to take place. So I'm like, Lord, but then, like I said, that kind of screwed my day up. But anyway, all was well at the end. Mm -hmm. I did do a couple of things I'm going to please with. Mm -hmm. And uh, by being in the Word, mm -hmm. we know that we don't let wrath go down on us in that day. Mm -hmm. You always have to do what? Cleanse yourself. Mm -hmm. So I had to go into repentance and forgiveness and apologizing and all kind of stuff yesterday. Mm. They were just trying to attack you. So what I'm saying, just because you're a Christian or a pastor or a minister or a bishop or whoever you're saying, don't think that you can't get attacked in these end times. Because he said, tell us when would these things be? And he's giving you plenty of signs letting you know when the end of the age mm -hmm. or the end of the world. And he's saying your brothers against brothers could happen. Mm -hmm. Daughters against mother mm -hmm. could happen. Children against children could happen. Mm -hmm. They could deliver you up into jail, have you what? Right. Arrested. Mm -hmm. Or cause some way for you to be arrested. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the things that we are looking for in the end of the age. Mm -hmm. These are the signs of his coming. Mm -hmm. These things that's going to take place. So you might as well just get yourself ready. Just start reading your scripture. And start trying to prepare yourself, stay in prayer, mm -hmm. so that the Lord might unction you. It's an unction of the Holy Ghost, letting you know, hey, that's what you're about to happen. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes he'll do it like a few days ahead of time, letting you know, hey, I'll give you an unction. And then you start thinking, hey, okay, there's something about to happen with them. So I got to wait now and see what's about to happen, because this ain't, this ain't this strange. Mm -hmm. So in a couple of days, something will take place. And when I said something did not warm me two or three days ahead of time, I probably just won't pay attention because a lot of stuff don't be coming around me. Mm -hmm. You know, or I'll be bigger than when I see it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I can't be bigger than because I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. So the Lord might want just, okay, we'll see how you deal with this. Mm -hmm. So he said, let me see that one coming. But anyway, all is well. 
just a sign just to let people know that because you serve in Christ, because we know Satan's final trial of the saints is to try the very elect of God. Elect of God. Mm -hmm. That's his final trial. That's his final blow to the church of Christ. His final blow to the church of Christ is to get you that serve Christ out of the will of God. Mm. That's his final blow to the church. And then he will be what? Consumed with fire. But he knows that he has not but a what? Short time. A short time. So he's going to get what? Real busy. And we talked about in one of our lessons here at the Gift of God Worship Center that Satan has used everything in his what? Toolkit. Mm -hmm. Every tool he got, he's going to use it against the saints. Mm -hmm. Using everything in his toolkit. All right, so that's going to do it for us today. Uh, um, just making you aware of can, things that can take place. Can I share an uh, Old Testament reading, Pastor? Yes. I know we was going to take it like today, but I had this Old Testament reading okay. that I did want to share, and okay. it's in 1 Samuel, chapter 16. And I just got a few verses. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, uh -huh. starting at verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, mm -hmm. Or on the height of his stature. Okay, since you're going to read these during the lesson, break the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Break the scriptures. Or explain it as you go. Okay. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance mm -hmm. or on the height of his stature. Who was Samuel? Samuel was a king. Was he a king? And he a prophet. Okay. I, th I thought he, he ruled too. He was King Samuel. He was a prophet, I believe. Uh, I think Samuel was like the prophet that told King, because he was like most of the time. Um, go back to 15.1. 15.1. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Samuel said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. Uh -huh. So he was what? So we, that he, puts, go ahead. He was a prophet. Right, so that puts him prophet. Mm -hmm. So it's always got prophets and kings. You got a king, you got a prophet. Mm -hmm. So you have a ruler. That's why, remember we read the scripture where they say, is there a man of God that we may inquire of, that we may know whether we should win these wars or not? Mm -hmm. So most times the kings want to have who around? A prophet. A prophet. Oh, nice Amen. Keep going. <clears throat> okay. So Samuel the what? Prophet. Okay, keep going. Amen. Go to the Almighty God. Okay, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. What? He's saying, don't judge the person by what you see. Mm -hmm. About what he's weighing. Mm -hmm. okay. Or how he look. Right. Or how tall he is. Right. Like he's not um, athletic build right. or something to that effect. Right. He's standing on the street with a sign saying, I work for food. Mm -hmm. Or I need money for food. Mm -hmm. Don't be careful with that one. Right. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Mm -hmm. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Mm -hmm. So that's saying that the Lord know your your condition. He knows how you feel about things. He knows where you stand because mm -hmm. as a man thinketh, mm -hmm. so is he. Mm -hmm. So what a man feel in his heart, that's mm -hmm. the thing that he's going to do. Right, and the Lord looking for your desire to serve. Mm -hmm. Looking for your desire to serve, like we just said in the beginning about becoming a slave, mm -hmm. becoming a slave for God, right. a slave for his people. Right. That's how you get blessings. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, 
Solomon. When he asked the Lord for the gift of wisdom. Yeah, the gift of wisdom. But then the Lord said, What do you want wisdom for? Mm -hmm. You know, so he can do what? Teach, Teach his people. people. Mm -hmm. So that's when you start getting blessed, when you try to start getting into God's service. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Verse 8, I mean, verse 8. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Mm -hmm. So this is one of uh, um, Saul's son then? Jesse. Jesse's son? Mm -hmm. I think they're Jesse's sons, I'm thinking. Read it again then. Verse 8. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Uh -huh. Verse 9. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, mm -hmm. and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Because he picked people based on, we would, if we doing that today, I'm bringing forth my sons, and I'm bringing them to you based on their education. If, if that was the day, I'd be doing that. Mm -hmm. And then after I finish with all the ones that have education, mm -hmm. I might bring up my next child that's successful in business. Mm -hmm. I might start, in my mind, how I'm thinking, how are you looking for somebody? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at you wanting to choose somebody bad your success. Mm -hmm. And the Lord don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord says he takes the weak things to confound the wise. Right. He don't see things as we see things. Mm -hmm. So if people today, if they want to pick a husband, mm -hmm. the first thing most women say, they're looking for your college, what? Degree. Degree. Mm -hmm. Then they go on to start looking for your financial abilities. Mm -hmm. Then they start looking at a partnership, not a relationship. They're looking for a bill-paying partner. Mm -hmm. And they base it love on your financial, your education, and all those type of things. On your what? Your car. Mm -hmm. On your house. Mm -hmm. On your ability that you all together can be successful in finances. Mm -hmm. And you're not choosing a man of God. You're choosing a man of the world that can help you produce worldly items. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. Right. It's not of God. Mm -hmm. It's of the what? Flesh. flesh. Mm -hmm. Your man is of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Your man is not on Christ. Right. Simple. But difficult. Right. Keep Verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. Uh -huh. How many more of them he paid? Seven. I'm going to go through the whole house. Mm -hmm. Picking them based on how he thinks they should be uh, acceptable mm -hmm. by what they have done right. in their lives. Mm -hmm. But he missed somebody. He always takes the one ran the house, the prodigal son ran the house, mm -hmm. the one that don't do a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and you break him up when? Lance. Lance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. Verse 10. Again, Jesse. Hold on, Master Glory. You're supposed to be doing this, not me. Amen. <laughs> you're supposed to be saying this. Well, I'm doing, you're supposed to be doing this, not me. You took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. Uh -huh. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord have not chosen these. Mm -hmm. So again, he's saying to Jesse that mm -hmm. everybody that you think is chosen of the Lord, you're wrong. Right. Like you're, you're overlooking the characteristics right. that the person should be possessing, you know? In the heart. <laughs> yeah, in the heart. 
Verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Now let me add so, this. Let me add this. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time when you pick people like that, mm -hmm. they don't love you in the what? In the heart. That's why they go out and what? Yeah, we're doing all these things together, but they go out and do what? Cheat on you? Mm -hmm. They cheat on you. Mm -hmm. But the one that really loves you, that will and can love you, mm -hmm. that's the guy you what? Resent the most. Don't want him. Don't appreciate Don't want him. Mm -hmm. But that's the one that can love you the most. But, you, but he can't help you in your financial growth. The one that that you don't see as prosperous as the rest. Right. Like, uh, for instance, there, I'm a movie person, so mm -hmm. it's this movie um, Sparkle, okay. where the, the oldest girl, you know, mm -hmm. her mom decided that she should marry a rich person or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But her next daughter, she thought she was good enough to be a doctor herself. Mm -hmm. She wanted the older daughter to marry the doctor, she said the middle girl would be a doctor, mm -hmm. and the, the youngest girl, she she would be successful on her own because she was the single she was the single girl. Right. So she had made up in her mind, you know, how far and what type of life that her children would have, mm -hmm. without considering, you know, their inner strengths, right. you know, their real worth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just what she thought about them. Right. And you know what else I just thought? And that could be based on, not that I know that it is a difference, but it could be based on who fathered them and mm -hmm. how she felt about their fathers. Right. They do that too. Yeah. yeah a so, lot of women are, are based the children on what are they like the father or what happened between them and the father also. Yeah, your daddy ain't no good, yeah, so you ain't going to be no good. Right. And that'd be the same one that ended up be in some other life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? He said what? Are here all thy children? So we know that Jesse was what? The who? The father. Yeah, the father. Right. Okay. Keep going. And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and mm -hmm. behold, he keepeth the sheep. He dirty. So he dirty. I was going to say that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want him for? <laughs> He's stinking. He's breaking him in here. Yeah. He got doo doo on his shoes. <laughs> he can't come in the house. <laughs> He's funky out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Smell it. He jumped up this morning, throw the same boots and pants back on to get out there and get the sheep straight. Uh -huh. He didn't take a bath today. I always got dirt on his fingernails and don't comb his hair or brush his hair. Or, you know, he just don't have no personal hygiene. Right. <laughs> you can just go on. <laughs> he sort of looked like a bum. Yeah, but the Lord said, yeah, good. but he loved the sheep. Uh -huh. It's a sad, it's a sad that he keep it what? Sheeps. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get that. <laughs> so I didn't sad. even get that. He's right. keeping the sheep. He's keeping sheep. Oh, wow. Sheep are people. Amen. He's keeping the people, the Lord is saying. He <laughs> loves what he's doing. Right. These folks, all the rest of your song, they love what they doing because of what? Money. They love their wives because of what? Oh, money. money. Mm -hmm. And their wives love their husbands because of money. money. He love you just for who you is. Right. <laughs> That's how Psalm of Solomon came up. He loved you from just conversating right. with you. Relationship. He love you just to think about you while he at work today. And you gave him nothing. Right. The son of Solomon, the love was just the love that you had in your heart for the person. Wow. <laughs> He's the sheep keeper. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Glory. <laughs> I got a revelation out of that. Thank love. you, Lord God. Verse 11. 
And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, uh -huh. and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, uh -huh. for we would not sit down till he come hither. Uh -huh. Like we gonna wait all the day right. until he finishes work. Yeah, why why are they saying that they not sitting down because they know that God is something here. Mm -hmm. God sent us here. Mm -hmm. His work. <laughs> if the work is not finished, so right. you can't rest yet. Right. Until God the work is finished. sent us here, so something is here. And I'm the man of God. I'm looking at what you present to me, and I'm seeing that this is not of Christ. Mm -hmm. Your people not of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what we were saying last night. There's people that serve Christ, but they are servants of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's people playing Christ. Mm -hmm. But then there's people that love Christ. Amen. He said, yeah, you worship me. Christ said, yeah, you worship me. But they are going to be true worshipers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you talk Christ out your mouth, but there will be people with Christ in their hearts. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Thank you, Lord. I need to do all that with your Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to the Almighty God. <clears throat> Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Uh -huh. Now he was ruddy. Uh -huh. And with the awe of a beautiful countenance, uh -huh. and goodly to look on. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Huh? <laughs> you dirty! You stinky! Mm -hmm. And he said, You good to what? What did he say? Read that again. Goodly, goodly to Read that look to. Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance uh -huh. and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, mm -hmm. anoint him, uh -huh. for this is he. This is him. Because the Lord don't look on what you just read in the beginning. The Lord don't look at what? At the your outward, outward appearance. appearance. The Lord don't choose folks like that. Mm -hmm. We choose folks like that. He don't do that. That's all you had out there, or what? That was it. Okay. For this is he. Mm -hmm. Give him one more. The person you least expect, uh -huh. you know, is the person that's after God's own heart. Right. You know. You never know. Yeah. Give it me was... one more out of that scripture, though. Give me one more out of that. <laughs> okay. Verse 13. Then Samuel <clears throat> took the horn of oil mm -hmm. and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Uh -huh. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David uh -huh. from that day forward. Uh -huh. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. He said he put the oil on him. Mm -hmm. He said he put the oil on him. Mm -hmm. And when he put the oil on the what? The spirit failed. Is he going to put the all on? I missed that too, Pastor. <laughs> I missed that too. Is he going to put the all on him? And anointed him in the midst of his brethren, so in their presence. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David uh -huh. from that day forward. Uh -huh. Fellow. Wow. He put the all on him. You gotta follow the what? The, the orders. Mm -hmm. We talked about that before, being an antichrist, whether you cry or an antichrist. Mm -hmm. You follow the what? The order. The order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you the prophet of God, but follow what? The order. The order. Give me one more ad for me. Verse 14. <clears throat> but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Huh? Mm. He's going to take that spirit most that I put on you and put it on them. Mm. And if you get out of order, I'm going to take the spirit. I'm going to take the spirit. How do you take spirits? Mm. I'm going to take the spirit. Huh? How do you, how mm. you took the spirit? Mm. 
God said, I'm going to take the spirit. I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to put it on somebody else. I'm going to play around with my spirit. I'm going to take my spirit. I'm going to place my spirit on somebody else. And I'm going to do what? I'm going to flee from you. Read that again. Verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, uh -huh. and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Whatever, that's what we said a lot of times, talk to people about confessing Christ. So when you confess Christ, you claim what? What we call that in Scripture? We call cleaning what? Cleaning your house. Mm -hmm. Cleaning temple. your temple. Mm -hmm. Once your temple is clean, and if you don't stay in your word, once your temple is clean, mm -hmm. what comes? What comes? Um, another temptation. An another evil spirit. spirit can come and get in your temple. Mm -hmm. What he just said right here. Right. When he took the spirit of God away, because the two came into into the same place. Mm -hmm. That's why he said people said uh, good and evil came out of the same place, mm -hmm. or the same body, or the same temple. Mm -hmm. So when the Lord took the spirit, the Holy Ghost. From Saul, it gave way for what? Uh, evil spirit. An evil spirit to enter. Mm -hmm. To enter. So the presence of God has what? Moved away from you. And that gave away able to. Mm -hmm. Good and evil. Right. Once one leader, the other will come. Mm -hmm. Or one push out the other. Right. You can have evil spirit get them cast off. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Ghost come and dwell in. Mm -hmm. And if you don't stand your word, the Holy Ghost will flee from you. And then the evil spirits come back, what, ten times ten or times. seven times mm -hmm. worse than the first. Right, break their friends with them. That's just, how, that's just how this earthly realm is set up. Mm -hmm. You don't have good or evil. Mm -hmm. Ain't no in between. Right. Read it one more time. Then you, you right there. Verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, uh -huh. and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Uh-huh. So when the, when the Holy Ghost flee from you or the Lord take, that's why a lot of people say you don't want to encounter this. You don't want to encounter this. Trust me. Mm -hmm. You don't want to encounter. You might know what it feels like to have the Spirit of Christ. You don't want to know after having that how it feels not to have it. Empty. Right. Or or you're using arms, and now you got to know how to feel without arms. Mm -hmm. You don't want to experience that. Right. Not spiritually. All is well today. Um, Anything okay. else? All is well. Bless the Lord. All right, that'll conclude for us today. All right. And hopefully we'll get back here again if it's the lowest wheel and get ready and prepare and set up for what the Lord will have us to do next. Amen. I want to quickly give a shout out to my grandbaby. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, she's going to be 11 in like oh. two, two days. So uh, let's pray for her and keep her in good spirits for her birthday upcoming and pray that the Lord will give her the gift of seeing that day come to pass. Yes, he's been here 11 years. You've been on the earth. You've been on the <laughs> earth. You've been on the earth 11 years. You've been on the earth. Huh? You've been on the earth 11 years. Right. I've been telling people that when the children stop popping the children all the time. They only been on the earth four years. Right. They only been on the earth Four years. Don't know that about no, what's going on. They're trying to find out. All right. You've been here for four years. All right. I've been here 52. Amen. I can't get it straight sometimes. All right. For sure. Amen. All, All right. right. Bless you all. Praise you.